Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Tigers Talk Rugby. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to just say that if you're listening on Facebook or YouTube, we are on other uh, audio-based streaming platforms. platforms. Thank you, CJ. Um, which include Anchor Breaker, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Radio Cast, Pocket Cast, Spotify, and Oh, I oh the last one doesn't oh, remember it. Dang it. I'm trying to do it off the top of my head this week because we are relocated. We are in our living space. We've got our TV in front of us, and we are about to do a live watch, or we say live watch. We have yet to see it, the North versus South game, and we are going to do our commentary as we watch the game. So with that, I'm Ethan Richards. And I'm CJ Bakel. And like he said, yeah, it's just us two. We're hanging out in our uh, living room. We got the game on the TV, just the recorded version, because we didn't want to watch it at 3 a.m. Uh, so, you know, it's it's like, you know, one o'clock, like 12.45 on a Saturday. So we had nothing better to do. So we might as well, uh, you know, watch, watch some rugby. rugby. And that, we think that maybe our commentary for you guys will be rather interesting. So uh, let me know, let us know what, what your guys' opinion of this game were. If you have any other, like, quarries or uh, anything that you guys want to talk about with us, just, you know, hit up the comment section on Facebook, you know, continue watching or continue, uh, you know, going on Spotify. We really appreciate it because, like, I know we did this last week. We, we posted the uh, Spotify link uh, along with the Facebook video yeah. and in the Apple Podcast link. All right, so the game has just kicked off. Also, real quick, um, this will be more highlights than anything out. Uh, oh, my God, Caleb Clark off the immediate start. <laughs> what a run. Yeah, so like we said, this is going to be more so a highlights rather than a continuing us, like, uh, talking. Because we, we can guarantee that we're going to have some lulls in the conversation and uh, some periods yeah. of time where we're just not talking. And Let us watching. know if, you, if you're entertained by this. If you, yeah, let us By know. the way, I am rooting for South. All right, I guess I'm going for the North then, just because we have to have some kind of friendly like competition. Of course. But if any of you guys really like this, let us know so that we can maybe do this more often. You know, watching like big games because like the Pro 14 uh, finals coming up soon. So if you guys want us to watch that or watch, you know, some uh, Premiership rugby, you know, I'm always down to watch the Premiership. Oh, for sure. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, <laughs> Caleb Clark with his hair. That's actually kind of funny. He's got like a man bun in it. It look, kind of looks, not going to lie, yeah. a little uh, a little stupid. <laughs> man, you're just going for it. Hey. I'm, I, I, I'm a no man shame of, in that. I'm a fan of the jerseys, obviously. I mean, they're just like the all black jerseys, just yeah, with the different like, logo. It's, like, they did, like, the, obviously the, the full black uniforms for the north but the south uniforms with the black socks i think that was a good move i just i'm a fan of the jerseys i like the uh so i remember it was like a while back it was probably like a 2014 or something like that I, the all blacks ended up opting out and wearing all white instead of all black and i thought it was the cleanest looking kit in a while like i've ever seen yeah <laughs> Big fan. I, I just like all white in any form of jersey. It's looking kind of a rough start for the South. Yeah. So I was I was thinking about this while it is like these guys are all, you know, teammates. It's you know, North versus South, they're all like all black teammates together. So I wonder what the competitive spirit is like for these guys. Like mm -hmm. are they is it just like as if it was a normal scrimmage or No, I think it's 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 got to be more than that because, like, this is representing, like, where you're from. Like, yes, they're all from New Zealand, but, like, like the North versus South rivalry, like, is even talked about when you see games like Crusaders Blues, you know? Yeah, like, I guess. I yeah. think, I think it, it means something to these guys. Push it through. Lala that just, like, grabbed the, just grabbed the ball and just put it down. <laughs> they were on their try line with a ruck, and Nepalalala just was like, all right, I'm going to have this ball and put it down. Let's, I was like, enough of this. I mean, I'm scoring this try. Look, he just scored, boop. <laughs> he just picked up and boop, down. 
But uh, no, so I was going to ask you before that try happened. Yeah. What do you think of Aaron Smith being the, uh, not starting over uh, TJ Paranara? That is it's, – it's kind of mind-blowing, but also, like, I get it, you know? Right. TJ Paranara I, I has put in so much work in the last year and a half, and he's looking – he's still looking phenomenal, you know? Like – I think he was – TJ was one of the best players, I think, for New Zealand, like, during the World Cup. I, he definitely looked phenomenal throughout the outdoor um, tournament. Like, I think it, 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 it makes sense. He doesn't need to prove himself. Yeah, I don't think – I think he's proved himself. What about you? I don't know. My opinion of it is that uh, TJ – I mean, I've, I've always liked TJ. I'm a big fan of TJ Paranara, but, like, I guess I guess he still has something to prove, it seems. But, I like, I don't understand why. I, I guess he doesn't really have a whole lot to prove at the same time, too, because he's always been he's always been Aaron Smith's number two. Yeah. Maybe they're – maybe the, you know, Ian Foster and the All Blacks coaches are kind of looking at, like, Brad Weber and Bryn Hall, too. But, uh – Honestly, yeah, TJ is going to be the number two behind behind Aaron. And he's a solid number two. The, again, the like I said, they, solid number two. I think TJ could be the starting nine at any other international, like, level. Like, any team internationally, he could be the starting nine. Yeah. It's just Aaron Smith is ahead of him, which is like – or Aaron Smith is probably the best nine in the world. Yeah, agreed. But like, I think the re- I think like once I think about it, maybe it is that the the uh, the All Blacks are kind of looking at like Bryn Hall, Brad Weber as like another option at nine versus TJ. So maybe in this game they're saying, okay, we're gonna put TJ versus Brad just to see what happens. Uh. Because we want to, we want to see if TJ is really like, is he truly our number two, or maybe they need to contemplate bringing on like a third nine within the squad. I don't know why you would need a third. Nine. I don't know why you would need a third nine, but maybe they're contemplating it. Like maybe a touring, like if you're doing, I think a touring squad, I guess that you have a third nine, and like Brad Weber would be that third nine. But um, uh, my big thing. It's just, I think TJ, I mean, he's younger. He's got more more future ahead of him with the All Blacks yeah. than Aaron Smith does. That's yeah. like undisputable. Oh, yeah. So I think – Because he just has a lot of years with them, potentially. Right. I, I think this is a pinnacle of where they're looking at putting his – position under pressure to see if it increases quality of play even more. Ah, than that's, the a good that point. It's that's a good point. Yeah. So if you have somebody kind of like right behind you on your, at your feet, like kind of, you know, chomping at, at your position. I mean, that's what I feel like. Felt provides like, pressure for him to, to yeah. perform. Yeah. It felt that way when he first came in and, and behind Aaron Smith, you know, like exactly. it felt like Aaron Smith was under pressure, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I guess so. And like, just with that pressure for Aaron Smith, put his game up a little bit. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, having competition for your position will always, like, without a doubt, make or break your your skills. Why is it that Jordy Barrett is on the south and Bowden Barrett is on the north? I think. I forget how they can, decided who, like, which island you're – you're you, can, for. you can represent um, the island that your team is on or the island that you're from. Is that not right? I, I honestly have no idea. I might need to Google this. Find it. So eight of the South starting 15 were raised and schooled in the North. Huh. That includes Cody Taylor, Nampola Lala, Sam Whitelock, Brad Weber, George Bridge, Jack Goodhue, Braden Enor, and uh, and uh, Jordy Barrett. But they all play for Southern Island teams, is that correct? 
the eligibility will be based on where a player first played their senior representative rugby, i.e. their first Mitre 10 Cup. This means like guys like Josh Iwani, uh, Jack Goodhue, who were schooled in Auckland, would only be eligible for South Island teams because their Minor 10 Cup debuts were for Otago and Canterbury, respectively. So I guess, yeah, that's it. That if you, that if you made your senior debut for a uh, Hemisphere team, for a Northern, uh, Northern Island or Southern Island team, that's where you, uh, that's where you get to play. That's rather interesting. Basically, it's like, actually playing where you're from because I know like a bunch of these guys are like they they've truly been born bred and played in the south and some of these guys were truly born bred and played in the north yeah so those guys probably have a lot of uh a lot of uh stuff to play for like a lot of uh pride I guess to play for New Zealand is built with a philosophy or with a perspective of wanting to be the best at rugby. And my attitude is, is when you're playing in this North versus South game, where they're selecting the best players they can for each of these rosters, at the end of the day, like, no matter if you're putting on a black jersey or a white jersey for this game, you're going to want to win and you're going to want to perform the best. Because, like... It's literally the best versus the best. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Literally, the, the, the team that comes up on top, you are the best team. Because both these teams are just absolutely stacked. Like, you could see either one of these teams representing as, like, the All Blacks in a World Cup. Oh, absolutely. And the biggest part about this is the fact that, like, I mean, you know, like, the All, Black, all Blacks coaching team is all sitting there watching this game. Like, they're all eyeing every single player on that field and seeing, like, are they going to be taking a position above them? Or are they uh, playing at the level that you expect them to play to be wearing that jersey? There we go, Damian McKenzie. Electric stuff from the guy. From the man, I should say. Player on his team. He's probably one of the best players, period. <laughs> True. He's so electric to watch as a 15. His ability to just, like, keep himself involved in the play, even after he's already released the ball on a pass and or, or taken contact um, and, and, like, got players to bite in on him. It's just so impressive because he just, like, works so hard to get back involved and back into making an impact. Yeah. He... He definitely is, like, the definition of, like, you know, majority of your, you know, work or whatever is off the ball. Yeah. He's, like, that kind of guy. And then whenever he gets the ball, it's just – he's electric. Man, I, I, back when he tore his ACL out and missed out on the World Cup, I felt really bad for him. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so tough because, like, a player like him deserves to be there. And maybe, maybe that he would have been a catalyst or some kind of extra, you know, nudge to help them do better in the World Cup. Yeah. Maybe make it to the final. Uh, <laughs> Somebody <laughs> impartial to England. Of course. Of course. But I don't know if you can blame their loss in the semifinal on one player or, or I think it was just a general, like, New Zealand just didn't do as well, but I digress. The most impressive part about what we've seen in these first 20 minutes of play is just, like, the the consistency in which these teams get their, like, their tackles, get their clears, get their pressure, and on defense, how consistently they, like, force a turnover. And then, or force a, a like clear out to be almost reckless in terms of like securing the ball. You know what I mean? Like well, it, the, the level of aggression and the level of just like consistency of that aggression is just, it's, it's impressive. Oh. 
All right, not gonna lie, this artificial crowd noise sounds terrible. <laughs> I like how they said Hoskins Satudu was the only one to read that play. Yeah, like not even not even Richie Mwanga or Jordy Bear read it beforehand. <laughs> Oh, wow, the South Bay. What? What is that, a pack of, like, five or six? It's going to set up a midfield mall. Why not? I guess. Why not? Because then you can take it either way. Because you oh, have to wow. come out. What a roll. I mean, that's such a good idea. That's such a good idea, though. That you, you, you set up, like, a, a midfield mall, so either you, the defense has to commit men to it, right? Yeah. Or you drive. And if they commit men to it, then you could swing it out one way and try and force an overload. I think the hardest part about doing that is ensuring that the other team commits to allowing the ball. Well, the, here's the thing: is like if the yeah, as long as you have to, you have to have at least one guy in that mall to yeah. consider it a mall, right? But I mean, if, if you're if you're, you're a mall and there's only like if there's like five guys of one other person, then you're gonna be able to drive. So the defense almost like all, when you think about it, almost has to commit five men to that mall. Yeah, so I mean, you're taking, you're already get, making it like more space for like a back line to run around. Yeah, how the South entered that contact, there was there was two decisions that were made that could have been made by the North, right? You could have committed to the mall and tried to stop it at the mall, right? Or sacrificing potentially uh, men out wide. Yeah. Or you make a negative tackle and you let the South maintain the momentum going through the uh, taking to ground, and they might just clear it and drop it like they did earlier. In the oh, season. yeah, that's and a good point. And then they just try to force a turnover on, uh, like, a poaching of the of the ruck, yeah. which they're it's so like, good at, obviously. Like, can you see it going to contact? Like, if you take that as a, as a, tack a tackle where you want to gain positive ground, like, you're tackling him into the five other South players – who are supporting this man and ready to carry him over the game line. Right. Like, or you make a negative tackle, and then they're all there for the clear, the uh, combat, and the potentially pick up of the ball and just score it off the edge while, while you're busy having him move backwards. Yeah. So, all right. I, I, that was very well set up and very well organized. And oh, they're not allowed to try. What? But there was obstruction apparently. Unfortunate. Obviously. Unfortunate, but it was a good it was a good play. It was yeah, a good set piece. Just, just not not the best execution on, on a uh, well well designed designed play. Yeah. Set piece. Okay. So the commentators are saying that the ref had claimed that the mall had stopped and the role was not uh, a continuous mall. So that's why there are some That's why there is an obstruction. Right. So. But what the commentators are saying is when you watch the replay, it doesn't look like it actually stops. It continues going. Yeah. So. It, yeah, that's. Okay. It so was just controversy already. Yeah. I think that was definitely a controversial call. But I think at the end of the day. Oh, it, wow. If you if the ref is doesn't feel that it's clean, then you you gotta play to the ref. So I love when teams get scrappy on a twenty two. It's one of my favorite parts of just like of of rugby in general. Actually. I like how it's scrappy between basically like teammates. Yeah. <laughs> and some of these like actually a lot of these guys are on the same team for not just at an international level, but like yeah, Even at the Super Otero rugby Club, yeah. Super Rugby level, like, a lot of these guys, like, are messing with each other on opposite sides of the field. But, I mean, usually they're next to each other. But the, it just, like, being agitative and being, like, aggressive on a 22, to me, is just, like, it shows your grit and it shows that, like, your constitution to just like fight any and every single battle you you oh that was for oh, uh, yeah. excuse me fight every any and every single battle for 
the extra meter, you know? Yeah. Hoskins Satutu. This is him being like, I want to play for the All Blacks. Let me play for the All Blacks. Please, guys. Is that his second turnover? Who? Bodis? Tutu. Oh, I think so. Bro, I can't get over these fake fan sounds. I don't like it. I don't I don't, I don't like, like it. it. <laughs> Let's see this. I want to see the man on the ground handed it to the guy above him and just kind of <laughs> and just zipped it out. It. He's like, I wasn't. He's just like, here you go. Yeah. Here you go, to Cody. Cody's like, screw this. Give it to Jordy. Yeah. Let him score. <laughs> Let the man back of the ruck wait for the ball to pop out. No, was, and then the ball came flying up the side. I was like, "Wait, who passed that?" Yeah, let's give it to let's give it to Jordy Barrett, the six four, like two hundred and like twenty pound monster. At <laughs> fifteen, I mean, he, he is, wrestled his way to the huge. corner. He is huge. He is huge. He's a big guy. I mean, all of the all the Barrett brothers are all pretty tall. Yeah, Scott's like. What six four like or six five six six something like that? Uh, Jordy's six three six four, and then Bowden I think is the shortest one. And he's like six feet tall. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Did you see that, CJ? What the uh, Jack Goodhue's? He bobbled it. And then, like, popped it to, like, Brad Weber yeah. for him to run onto it. Oh, it's such a shame to see Jack Hoodie without the mullet. You know, something fell off. <laughs> you didn't realize it? I didn't pin it. Dude, that was, like, said it. that was, like, a I major – that was, like, a major story – or, a, like, a story or article this last week. I know. That I, this is the first time in two years that Jack Hoodie was going into a match without a mullet. I miss it. I already miss it. He shouldn't have, he shouldn't have cut it. That's literally all he was known for for the longest time was his mullet. Now everybody's like, who's that guy? Yeah. <laughs> that good who? <laughs> oh. Dang. <laughs> Roast him. <laughs> if Jack Good Hugh is listening, which I hope he is, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, if, if Jack Goodhue's listening, then uh, – yeah, Jack Goodhue, if you're listening, reach out. We want to interview you. Specifically on why you cut your hair. I thought this would be more of a high-scoring game than it is right now. Really? Yeah. Just know. because that since, – since they're, like, all kind of teammates, all kind of, like, you know, they all play together – I thought this would be like a, you know, an NBA all-star type of game where nobody would play defense. I think that's what makes it such a tight, even, close scoring game is because, like, any and all errors that are going to happen or any and all, like, successful events that are going to happen are going to be through, like, the small miniature sets of, like, synergies, for with lack of a better word for my – I don't know what else to use, <laughs> but like between individual players rather than, you know what I mean? Like, like the hole's going to form between two players you don't traditionally stand next to each other on defense. Yeah, I guess or, that's right. Or the, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, like it's, and I think that's what makes it so much more interesting is because like, like the weaknesses are more highlighted between players who don't traditionally play together, even, like, at an international level, you know? Right. But then on the other side of the coin, you have people like Bowden Bear, who has played with probably everybody, everybody at this point. Maybe, maybe, Man. Move it to the maybe, like, 85%. Yeah, I mean, he's played with a lot of these guys – like via the all blacks. Right, right. Or like you said, the hurricanes and blues. It's just one of, like so it but it's not about that. It's like Satutu who who hasn't played with a lot of these guys. 
you know? Right. Who, who doesn't see a lot of the, oh. Yeah, with Kosuke Satutu, he doesn't really play with a lot of these guys. He only plays with the Blues boys. Right. Yeah, sorry, my point completely got away from me when I watched that scrum collapse. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Did not look good yeah, at all. A couple of people wanted to play with their necks. Yeah. Let's say everybody just fell straight onto their heads. That looked like it hurt. Uh, Been there. <laughs> hey, there's our big fan favorite, or I should say fan favorite of Michelle and Kenna, Carl to an Acafe. <laughs> That's a callback. <laughs> Big car with the mustache. <clears throat> quite impressive. You gotta admit, it is quite impressive. I was yeah. talking to Troy the other day, and apparently, Carl used to be a security guard and just was like called up for the all blacks. He's like, all right, I'll do it. That's amazing. <laughs> like, played, like, no, not gonna lie, he played rugby, but like, he was just a secure working as a security guard at one point in time, and then they were like, "Hey, you want to play some rugby? You want to play for the All Blacks?" I'm like, sure. Yeah. <laughs> play for the world's best team. Historically, world's best. I wouldn't say they're the best right now. Guess how old Carl is. How old? Guess how old. Guess, nah, buddy. I don't even guess. To be honest, guess. I can't even tell you how long he's been in the in the game. It doesn't matter. Just guess how old he is. But just looking at his appearance and looking at his face and just looking at him, period, how old do you think he is? Oh, Maybe you're like 32? No. Older or younger? Younger. 28? Younger. What? 24. He's 27. 27? Yeah, I would have never thought. No, not a, not a day in my life I would have thought he was. Okay, Carl looks like he's like 35. And the kick out. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is currently halftime for this game. It is 17 to 14 for the South. The South is currently winning. Uh, we're going to take a short break during this, uh, during this halftime. And uh, we'll be back with you guys in just a minute. Welcome back. We're uh, hopping into the second half. Yep. Aaron Smith is on the field now. So that was their entire play. So they're splitting halves. Well, like we said, the score is 17 to 14 towards the south. Um, looks pretty, you know, it looks like it's a tight game right now. Maybe the second half will become a little bit more entertaining, maybe high scoring. Maybe. There's been a lot of back and forth. So we talked about it a little bit earlier, but I'm really happy that they did a 40-40 split um, with uh, uh, Aaron Smith and TJ. Yeah, I think that's a but, fair. It's fair because like they're two of the best in the world, and they're definitely like like they're not trying to. I guess like I guess their strategy. Might just to be like for these guys, like, all right, we're just gonna split you just so we already know that you guys are pretty freaking good. You don't have a whole lot to prove. We're just kind of trying to put a little bit of pressure in the media. Yeah. Do you think they could be doing it because they wanna give, give both players equal opportunity to show what they can do? Probably. Because why not? Yeah. Especially with both the both of them. Where it's always like, all right, Aaron Smith, you're starting. TJ, you're coming on when Aaron Smith gets tired. Yeah. Versus, like, in this situation, they're able to both showcase their talents and skills with 40 minutes of play. Yeah. And, like, at that same time, you could tell you could tell your scrum house, like, all right, you have 40 minutes. Like, before the game, you're like, all right, you both have 40 minutes to prove yourself. Mm -hmm. So work your tail off for those 40 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Especially for a, like a, a position wow. like scrum half where you're running all over the pitch. That was such a bold decision. 
Sorry, I, I know I just completely changed the topic, but the North just passed the ball inside their own 22, all the way from one side of the field to the other side of the field, somehow got the outside edge and got a kickoff to put the ball all the way in the south half. Yeah. God. Well, here's the thing. You that do that, cool. you do that, like, that decision-making at, like, the collegiate level, you're going to get screwed over. You're doing with the All Blacks, that's just typical. You can trust all the guys that are out there to uh, catch pass and make good quality passes. Yeah. I just, at the end of the day, you're still, you're still risking more variables passing it inside your 22. It's just a bold decision that was stressful to watch. There we go. It was just a brilliant set of, of passes and support lines. Making sure you're in open space to receive that ball. It's well designed. You look at Aaron. Look at how much Aaron's running in this play. He just like starts running, and then he's like in the middle of the pitch, knowing that he's gonna be there for the uh, for the the inside ball. Yeah. Like he saw that there was an open play, it was gonna break loose. So he's like, all right, I'm just gonna chill in the middle of the field. And, and as we were talking about earlier, now who touched that ball twice during that play as well? Damian McKenzie. Those two workhorses put that play together. Those two just worked work so hard for that to put the North in the lead. Yeah. <sighs> Aaron Smith has got to be in incredible shape. Not going to lie. Yeah. Because he literally just is all over the pitch. Same goes for David McKenzie, all over. Oh, wow. wow. Hoskins, Satutu. They, honestly, the North uh, back three is pretty freaking good. Hoskins, Satutu, Artie Savea. Like, come on. Well, Especially Satutu has a lot to prove. We've talked about him a lot already, but, I mean, he's he's got a lot to prove, you know? Like, right. he wants to be on – he wants to wear that all-black jersey. He's, he's been talking big game about be, get, getting to the international level. It, like, honestly, he's becoming one of my favorite players just because of, like, his attitude, I guess. His determination? Yeah. That he's like, hey, all blacks all, are, like all, like, all black coaches. I could go play for England if I want to. Yeah. What are you going to say about that? That's bold. I was that's a bold decision. There goes Carl. Big Carl. Still a big fan of his mustache. It's it's just quite a mustache of the tournament. <laughs> MVP. Uh mustache. Where you go with this? I don't know where I was going. <laughs> MVP, most valuable player, most M M V P most valuable mustache. MVM. That was just all kinds of just failure. Now yeah. I'll edit it out. <laughs> no, no, but you gotta leave this in. Aww. Yeah, leave it in. <laughs> Let the fans know. Let the fans know that I'm omniscient. Okay. I am all knowing. I can control this episode. But what I find interesting about Liam Coltman is that. He has been playing a lot off the bench for the Highlanders, and that's because Ash Dixon is there, right? Mm -hmm. I kind of feel bad for him because he's pretty good. He's a pretty good uh, hooker. Like, for a while, he was in that all-black spot. Yeah. And then now Ash Dixon just kind of, like, since he's the captain of the Highlanders, he's, he's going to be the number two. Not to say that he doesn't – Deserve it. The yeah. team definitely has put in the work and the effort and the skill and everything to be where he is. But here's the here's something to say about him: that you have Aaron Smith on that squad and Ash Dixon's the captain. Yeah. 
So you already got like a big leader in Aaron Smith, a guy that you you could look to and be like, all right, he is a solid leader. Yeah. He could captain anybody, even the All Blacks, if yeah. potentially. But no, Ash Dixon is the captain, and it's like, wow, I mean, that's, that's really pretty. Seen. That shows you how much leadership and how like yeah. valuable the coaches or the, I guess the entire squad really sees him. Yeah, go quickly. Go quickly, Sal. Uh, at this point in time, I don't really have anybody that I'm cheering for. I'm just watching good, like, good rugby. I'm just enjoy. Good, I got family on the Southern Island. I can say that in good <laughs> confidence. I have no association. <laughs> but I will. Shout okay. out to Bruce and Shelly. Love, love you guys. Enjoy all of our Christmas uh, calls over. Uh, I guess that's usually like Skype, I believe, but we usually do something with them. I, I'm the only uh, sibling that hasn't gotten a chance to come down and visit, so I can't wait. I, I'm looking, I looking for it to. Yeah. Where's my invite? <laughs> I want to be there in the next couple of years. You know, maybe I'll end up uh, at a studio down there. That'd be sweet. I will say the North looks a little bit more rehearsed than the South does. In the South, looks like a bunch of guys are just like, yeah, we're here to play rugby. Yeah, it's it's kind of – it looks more like a group of guys who, like, made a group chat about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, and were like, all right, boys, we got a game. And then they – Oh, Will well, Jordan. Twice. Will Jordan. One of my uh, well, there he, there we one of your Mount one Rushmore, of my Mount Rushmore players, right Will there. Well, Jordan, yeah, there we go, a huge try from him. Yeah. Keeping his uh, he, I mean, he was really good for Alex I mean, and so now he's just gonna cut like move it over and be like, you know what, I'm gonna get this All Blacks jersey. Let's say, uh, Will Jordan uh, in Otoroa was had the most line breaks, uh, yep. most. Broken tackles, is that correct? I I, I, I gotta remember. I gotta remember. I was I had him down for last weekend, and, but yeah, he uh, very very powerful runner uh, with with very with the pace. ball in hand. I believe it has a lot of pace behind him. Absolutely, and, and all right. If you had to pick two players from this game that you would want to bring over and to run a couple uh, Clemson rugby practices. Maybe like they're here for like a week. They're and they run a week and a they week, run a couple. Yeah, they'd run a week's worth of practices. Which players would you bring over? They have to be on. They have to be uh, any of the, tw- like, or I guess 46. Okay. Any of the 46 players. I think my first one would have to be Aaron Smith. Okay. Just because I think he – first, like, he, he just has so much, I feel like, experience and knowledge of just playing the game that I feel as if he would be – he would literally – like, whatever he says is just, like – it's going it, to carry weight to him. Yeah, it's going to have a lot of value. And, like, his – just, like, him talking – I like I, like, for me, I am a forward, so I'm, like – it, it, I, I probably won't be able to relate to a lot of things that he says, but like his his like attitude, his work ethic, and some of those kinds of uh, like I mean, qualities that come with him, his leadership skills might be able to, you know, you can learn from that and carry over and like help build a culture almost, or like argue, help improve something like that. Yeah, I would argue some of the things that he would say would have more weight because, I mean, in his position at nine. He runs so much control and command over where the forward pods are going to be, where the like, what the what the flow of the field's going to look like. Yeah, and he can so, also he also can control a lot of like the speed of the game. Yeah, and like what's going on. Mm-hmm. So I guess yeah, that could also help with like you know if you're trying to like teach a team how to uh, how to control pacing and. Mo- and momentum. Oh, great ball. What a ball. Tyrell Lomax. But, yeah, like, I would say him. And then. Who's your other? Who would be my other? So, you got Aaron Smith. 
one other player you would want to bring over? Uh, I mean, I would say Bowden Barrett just because I like Bowden Barrett a lot. But <laughs> just because just I want to meet him. Yeah. Like, that would be like, yeah, I'll, I'll take Bowden Barrett any day of the week because I just want to meet him. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. I mean, Maybe like a like Sam Whitelock. I feel Ooh, as a Sam Whitelock would probably be a good one. Good. Like a, for a good pick for forwards. So if like you have to have like Sam Whitelock and Aaron Smith, I think you've got the backs and the forwards kind of there. He's like he's a similar type deal, a lot of experience, big leader type. Mm-hmm. You know, he could probably give a lot of uh, insight with uh, with like lineouts, especially. Mm-hmm. I think in the backs, if I were to pick one back and one forward, the back I would pick. I, I agree. I would be stuck between I would be stuck between three guys for backs. Aaron Smith, uh, Richie Mwanga, of course, and Bowden Barrett. Would I would be stuck between any of those three? I honestly I think I have to agree with you on forward though. I don't know. I don't look at any fo- other forward on the field and. Like, be like, that's that's who I want to coach me, you know? I would also think uh, Dan Coles would probably be a good one. It's true. Dan Coles, he'd probably be a good person that coaches. I mean, he does – uh, he coaches youth. Yeah. So, yeah, he's yeah. got that experience. So, he'd be pretty – he'd probably be pretty good. Uh, maybe, like, Ash Dixon, like we were talking about him and his leadership skills earlier, maybe. That's true. Wow. Look at those penalties. See that? Was it 11 yeah. for each side? No, no, no. Uh, the South had a lot less. Oh, I didn't see that. I must be uh, blind. That was um, turnovers conceded. Oh, 11. turnovers is elite 11. I mean, when, when def- definitely the best group of ball poachers in the game. On this field, I'm not surprised. Yeah, I'm not surprised about how many turnovers there are. Mm-hmm. Not even remotely. So we just listened to uh, a interview with TJ per- Pernara from the sideline, and uh, he was talking a little bit about, you know, when you're when you're when you when you play with all these guys, yeah, you're all mates and you're all friends and you know joke around with each other. But then once you step in within those uh, lines. You're not friends anymore. Yeah, you're just trying to win. Game time. It's game time. Let's win. Oh, oh. Wow. Oh, oh, interception. Will Jordan. Will Jordan is taking over in the second half. He's. He was in that one. Yeah, there we go. There was number one in tries. Number one in meters game and number one in defenders beaten. Yeah, we we were trying to remember earlier his stats from Altaroa, and that was it. Will Jordan's stats. Yeah, he was a dominant player for the Crusaders this this tournament. Good work from there. Caleb Clark, one of my favorite, or one of the guys who I said was uh, one of the best in the wow. best from Altaroa. Got that big line break, and then there you go. Rico Yuani with another score, with another try. It was just a really good abuse of uh, a broken defensive line. Yeah. On both sides. Like, both they, – they brought it to the close side on the camera but look side. But look who set that, tr- set that pass up. Yeah, Damian right. McKenzie. Damian McKenzie doing work. Damian McKenzie put that ball pretty – like, he, he placed that ball really well. And it was a good line and for then Caleb he was, Clark. He was ready. And made the second uh, assistant pass to the try scorer. He could literally play any position, not gonna lie. Oh, absolutely. I can imagine David McKenzie. Yeah, like I know he's played ten. He's played. He plays fifteen. I could see him playing nine. He could play nine if he, he wanted could to. Play nine if he wanted to. He could play wing. Easy. Maybe inside center. Outside center would be a little bit of a push. Just because he's not that big, but like, I don't know, he could play. 
That man knows how to play and he knows how to ball. Things like that, that he literally did the setup pass and made the decision for both line breaks for that try score are, are why I put him in my uh, Mount Rushmore. Yeah. He's just so hired. No, I'm wholeheartedly agreeing with him. Yeah. He's just so good at reading the field and so good at making the decisions that he needs to to right. allow the opportunities to fester and form. Well, that's why I say, like, he's one of my favorite players. Yeah. Hands down. It's just because, like, he's just so entertaining to watch. He's really good. Like, he really knows his, how good he is and, like, how – you know, he understands that he's one of the best players. He doesn't let that – He doesn't let it take over. Him. Yeah, yeah. I saw a video the other day, and it was of Damian McKenzie at, uh, for his high school side. It was like it was like really? it was like a game of him playing in high school, and oh wow, he was still as dirty back then. Yeah, like he was like what I what I tell you, he was basically like carrying the entire like team. No, he was carrying the entire game. Like he was so entertaining to watch, and like that was back when he was in high school. Yeah, he just knows how to take over. He's and it's showing to, right now that he knows how to take over. Every time I feel like he's on the field, he's got to he's got to see everything in slow mo. Like there's no way that he processes the information he processes on the field like without like, like yeah. having the ability to slow time. <laughs> like he's got to have the ability to slow time, right? Like there's no way. Well, you like you hear it a lot from these guys. It's like yeah. You just need to learn how to slow down the game. Mm -hmm. Like, at the international level and even at super rugby level, a lot of these players will say the hardest thing from going, you know, super rugby to, to uh, international is, like, the speed. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you just need to slow it down because you're playing with the best in the world at that point in time. Right. Not just in your country. The best of seven, eight billion people. Right. right. Oh, oh, the North, oh. the North trying to get back in this game right now. It's 31 28. It's 69 minutes. Oh, North is, man, uh, she's gonna call a penalty here. Man, Are they gonna take it quick, maybe. Oh, no, oh, oh stop Put the ball. That's they're, yeah, they're just trying to slow it down. They're I guess. trying to stop the quick pass. I would like to say the uh, North is really putting in a big effort to get this comeback. Because they were down 31-21 shortly after uh, halftime. And now they're at the 70th minute, and they're, they're within the five. They're working, yeah, exactly. They're working their tails off and within the five. Oh. I, think, I think the um, beautiful double line break try from David McKenzie so might have changed the moment. Or the changed up to the – Energy and the uh, and the momentum, momentum shifted the momentum. Shift. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Dan McKenzie does like see everything in slow motion. How did right. you see that? And there's another try. The floodgates are opening. Oh, nine minutes to take in taking the lead. That's brutal. The momentum's in your favor. Brutal. Yeah, the South Africa are going to have a tough time now. This game really has been a back and forth, and I'm, I'm all now it is. No, yeah. I mean, it this second half, half, this second half is getting a lot more interesting than the first. As we, yeah, as we get closer to the end, it's just, uh, it's like becoming more of a nail biter. Yeah. Hey, that's all we wanted. Though. Four point game. It's and eight, and eight minutes left? Yeah, eight minutes left right now. It's north 35, south 31. So these next eight minutes will hopefully be interesting. So stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know what I would do if uh, the south turned this game around. Man, they got 
they got li- like literally 30 seconds and whatever extra time to uh, score a try and win it. I mean, it's four points. It's possible. Very possible. I mean, what was that game where Wales ran probably a good 16, 20 faces over time? True. And, like, they went uh, – I think it was against France. I believe so. I don't know. It's been a little while. Since. Like six or seven years yeah. since that happened. But they they kept that ball in a, the out of time for quite a while. There it is. There's the 80 minute mark, and we got to well, we got to pack go. down. Well, yeah. So the the North squad kicked, they got the penalty, kicked it out, got the line out. But then the lineout ball was not straight. So now the South have a chance in extra time to potentially score. They got a they got a scrum right. I would say like in middle in the middle between like the ah, five meter yeah. and the twenty-two. So we're about to see how this goes down. This might be this might be a I'm on the edge of my seat right now. <laughs> I believe. I believe that. I believe that we. I believe that we will win. I believe that we will win. South is at the five meter driving. No kidding, like both squads are in this mall right now, and they're just trying to get it over. Oh, are they gonna call collapsing? They gotta get that ball out. They gotta get that ball out at the south. No, his are on. Oh no, he's got it. He's got it. He's got it. Oh man, we gotta bring it out. We gotta bring it out wider. Almost three minutes over. And, and they, they are just fighting. And oh, another no. penalty against the uh, against so what the is that? North. 20 penalties by the North. A 20 penalties from the North. I mean, they would, that, let's be honest, that penalty was unnecessary. They were really trying hard to get a... Uh, they were trying to just get to the ball and kick it out. Yeah, but they were really trying yeah, hard. They, but, like, they weren't succeeding. Yeah, they... I think uh, the pressures and, and the stress of the situation really got to him on that one. Get it out. Oh Another advantage. Gosh. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Will Jordan, what a kickback. Oh, my God. The sound. <laughs> Four minutes over. <laughs> Four minutes over full time. And Will Jordan just gets this absolute kick pass. Beautiful. Amazing kick pass. Beautiful. I mean, the reason why they did that was because the, the North conceded wow. another penalty. And they were just trying to – they were just going to play the advantage. How amazing is that? Yeah, I mean, you're gonna put you're gonna put Will Jordan versus the anyone, other anyone one on one. Will Jordan's gonna win that. Oh my god! I gotta I gotta catch my bearings for this one because I was. Oh. What a ending! What an ending to a match! All right, let's see if Jordy can uh, get this conversion. And make it the not final it match. Matters. Yeah, not that it matters, but like still 38 to 35. What a close game. This real this game really did live up to its hype. It was evenly matched. It was like it was uh, a lot of matchups, like one-on-ones, a lot of like comparing people to other people. You know, you're watching like the Bo- Bowden Barrett versus like Richie Mwanga matchup. You're watching all these like, you know, back threes versus back threes. Like, you even got to see a little bit of competition within their own team with, like, Aaron Smith and TJ Paranara getting split halves. But what a – What a game. What a game. Yeah. Um, well, so on that note, I'm CJ Bakel. I'm Ethan Richards. And uh, everybody go watch some rugby. I mean, we just did it, so <laughs> there should be no excuse that you guys can't. <laughs>